in today's Big Bang. Build these awesome off-road racers out of toast. The story of the battery, which starts with frog's legs. And the secret of everlasting sandcastles. and welcome to the Big Bang. Here's a puzzle for you. Can you make corks float upright? Upright? Well, if I just hold it underwater and let go... Well, no, it's a cork. It's just going to bob on its side. What I need is something to weigh the end down. Ah, you're not allowed to use anything to weigh the ends down. Now, you can do it using only the corks. Have a think about it. There is a somewhat cunning solution to this puzzle and I will reveal it at the end of the Big Bang. Eggs, start your engines. And they're off. And Michael Schellmacher gets a head start in his green toast buggy. Victorious. Oh, they moved to the school. Reload, reload. Aha, I'll beat you. And Michael Schellmacher is once again in the lead. But oh no. I'll beat you. And I'll great beat you. Michael ah. Schellmacher, he takes. The chequered flag. And Eggy Irvine is a close second. Yay! <laughs> Off-road egg buggy racing is completely daft, but it rocks. Now, you can make yourself an off-road egg buggy using cardboard if you want, but we found the best structural material to use is toast. Now you'll need to cut a hole in your toast big enough for the wheels. Now I'm using bottle tops and if you cut a hole that's big enough for two bottle tops sitting on top that should leave you with a piece of toast with a hole big enough for all four wheels. Next you'll need to glue on some bits of drinking straws, four like this poking into the hole and another bit of drinking straw glued on the front. Now you do realise because you've glued your toast you can't eat it anymore. Right, next you need to fit the wheels. That's easy. A kebab skewer like this. Pass it through the drinking straw like that. Then pass it through the bottle top with a hole in the middle. Then the other bottle top. Then back into the next drinking straw. All the way. Line up the wheels. Turn it over and your egg buggy's ready to rock. Now, the crazy thing about egg buggies is that as the wheels roll forward, the egg does a flip backwards. Daft. The course is anything you'd put on a breakfast table with one secret addition. Bits of cardboard under the tablecloth provide ridges and hills. Now, it's quite tricky, but it's possible to pull your cart uphill if you do it slowly. But when you go downhill, the only thing breaking the cart is the egg rolling backwards. So it tends to run away with you. If you visit the Big Bang website, you'll find a really simple design for an egg-based grandstand. Or you can just make up your own. Another race? Oh, yeah. This time, it's at Brands Hatch. Get it? Oh. <laughs> and they're off. Shellmacher gets off to an early lead over Peggy Irvine. And look, look, oh, oh, it's a bit off for Shellmacher. Oh, they'll have to stop the race. The emergency services are on the scene. It looks like Shellmacher's scrambled. Looking for your mummy, Ernest? No, not that kind of mummy. Egyptian mummy. The Egyptians wanted to preserve the dead bodies of their relatives, so they wrapped them in bandages. Here are two more things about mummies. Can you tell which one is the big fib? Fact or fib? Back in the Middle Ages, mummies were ground up and made into medicine. People believed the ground mummies had magical healing properties. Feeling better, Ernest? Fact or fib? 
When the mummy of King Ramesses II had to be flown to Paris for an exhibition, it wouldn't fit in the luggage hold, so it had to have a seat instead. Which is the big fib? Make your choice now. Well, mm, yes, ground-up mummies were used as medicine, so the big fibber is um, <laughs> Cynthia. Ramesses II didn't travel as a passenger, but he did have a passport which gave his occupation as King Deceased. <laughs> and that's no big fib. And you can have a go at spotting more of Cynthia and Ernest's big fibs on the Big Bang website. Gareth! Gareth! Yay! Uh, I have here a perfectly ordinary white envelope. On that white envelope, I have a perfectly ordinary blue stamp. Now, using the gift of the four elements, I'm going to make that postage stamp disappear. <gasps> First element, water. Second element, some common old garden earth. Third element, fire. <laughs> Fourth element, a little air. <laughs> to get rid of the smoke that's around here. And now I need a volunteer uh, to help me with this trick. <laughs> yes, you, sir. Okay. Yeah. Now then, madam, uh, what's your name? Uh, Violet. It's disappeared. Violet, can you confirm that that has indeed disappeared? Yeah, it has. No, hang on, hang on. I know what's going on here. Yeah. The water is bending the light from the stamp. Yeah. So I can't see it yeah. side on. Yeah. But if I look straight down, so yeah. if I remove this earth, yeah. I can see the blue postage yeah. stamp. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Caught me out. You're saying that the blue stamp has not disappeared? No, I can see it. It's still there. Yeah. Okay. How do you explain that? Then? Ah, it's orange. That's really clever. Where's the blue stamp? What did you do there? Ah. No, come back here, Gareth, and explain ah. what you've just done. That was very clever. Violet's yeah. right. It's not magic, of course, but it is a good trick. She's also right when she says that it was the light being bent by the water that makes the stamp invisible. Now, from this angle, you just can't see the stamp. But if you look from the top, it's still perfectly visible. Now, that's what the earth is for. You put the earth on top and you can't see it anymore. Now, the real difficult part of this trick is making the stamp change colour. And here's the answer. You don't use one stamp, you use two. When you set up the trick, start with an envelope with a red stamp on it and then cover it with a blue stamp like that. And the element that makes this trick work is glue. Put a tiny dab of glue on the underside of the glass. And then when you plant the glass down, it sticks to the stamp, and when you lift it up, it takes it away, making the stamp seemingly change colour. Great trick. Try it on your friends, but don't tell Violet I told you how it's done. I heard that! Oh. <laughs> Now there's a big idea. One of the first people to look at batteries and electricity was an expert on frogs, the Italian scientist Luigi Galvani. Ciao! OK, I'm a coming, I'm a Luigi coming. wanted to understand how frogs worked. Hello. Hey, come in, come in, Monsieur, come in. You're frog's legs. Well, you're a cheeky, frenzy lady. Uh, monsieur, excuse my poor English. I mean, here are your frogs. Mate. Oh, bravo, 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 Merci. grazie. Fantastico. Now I can get on with my work. Luigi was interested in everything about frogs, especially their legs, and he came up with a theory about how they jump. Hey, look at this. I put the frog's legs on here, and they start dancing around as if they were alive. I think I know what's going on here. I think there is electricity stored in the muscles of the frog leg. This makes them go hoppity, hoppity, hoppity. I call it this animal electricity. Galvani, 
Giovanni Bongiorno. Hey, Galvani showed his friend, Giovanni. Alessandro Volta. Look at this, look at this. The frog leg, they make electricity and they dance around like they is alive. Volta wasn't convinced, so he tried Galvani's experiment in his own laboratory. Hmm, look at this, sir. The hook, she is made of brass, and the rack, she is made of iron. Two different metals. I wonder if I, uh... Ah! <laughs> Mamma mia! It's electricity! I made electricity! <laughs> Walter had made the very important discovery that the brass hook and the iron rack connected by the saliva on his tongue produced electricity. Walter tried lots of different metals and eventually came up with the first ever battery. Uh, let me see now. It's uh, silver, paper, Zinc, that's it, Ivaya. And, uh... Ow! And that's more or less how a battery works today. <laughs> Mr. Volta's invention was so clever that today we have electric volts. So, next time someone gives you a battery-operated toy, you know who to thank. great if sandcastles lasted forever. The only trouble is, they either fall apart or the sea gets to them. But I think I found a way. To make your sandcastles last forever, you need a little PVA glue. Mix the glue in well. Then add some water. The water helps the glue to coat all the grains of sand. It's a bit like making concrete. as a rock. And if you like, you can bring the whole beach home. How are you getting on with Gareth's puzzle? He wanted us to float cork upright in water, but I can't see how it's done really. You haven't worked it out yet, have you? Well, no, because we can't use anything to weigh it down, can mm -hmm. we? So... No. Well, the clue's actually already in the water. If you look, some of the corks are kind of clumping together. They're sticking together. But they're not upright. Ah, they will be. Pick one of the corks up, okay. right, and get the other corks and arrange them around that first cork so they're all facing the same way. You see, water is weird stuff. It likes to sort of stick together. And each of those corks is covered in a thin film of water, which should stick the corks together. OK. Yeah, now, dunk it underwater so they're really soaked. Mm -hmm. And if you bring them up to the surface, the water should hold the corks together and they should support each other upright. I'm not sure about this, but... Wow! Hey, hey, hey! Look, it's like a cork raft. That's fantastic. There's lots of other brilliant tricks just like this on our website. As well as details of everything else we've made today on the show. That's it for now. We'll see you next time on... The, the Big Bang! <laughs> In the next Big Bang, your lolly sticks come back as boomerangs. Why lifts are safe, honest. And the Big Bang beatbox drum machine.